as construction of the world's largest offshore wind farm gets underway, Orsted of Denmark has struck a deal with Villicom to build a mobile network out at sea. The Hornsey 2 project covers 472 square kilometres off the coast of Yorkshire and will one day generate enough ele electricity to power 1.3 million homes. But before that can happen, the complex project needs to be built. Well, joining me now is the director of the wind farm project at Orsted, Patrick Harnett, and the chief executive of Villicom, Sean Keating. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Patrick, let me start with you. This contract to Villicom, one of many that you've awarded around the construction of Hornsey 2, what's the overall project cost? Uh, the overall project cost, Ian, is around about um, £3 billion. Pounds. So uh, that's for all of the infrastructure onshore and offshore in order to create this enormous offshore wind farm. Um, and like you said, it will create enough green energy for uh, about uh, a city about the same size as Manchester, 1.3 million people in 2022 in its operation. And it's due to be uh, fully operational by 2022. Are you still on target to hit that? Yes, despite all the challenges with COVID-19 and everything else, we've managed to navigate them, create safe places of work for all of our people. And uh, we're still on track and on budget to deliver in 2022. It's, uh, it's an incredible challenge, an incredible project. And as all said, we're always up for that challenge. Well, Sean, you've got to provide the mobile network for this project. Have you, have you ever embarked on anything like this before? No, it's a fantastic project. I mean, essentially what we're doing is building a mobile network in the middle of the sea. Um, we know that mobile connectivity makes a huge difference in people's lives. And on this project, you have up to 1,000 people very far offshore for weeks at a time. And the mobile connectivity we're providing will make a real difference in their lives. They can talk to their families, they can consume media and entertainment and keep in touch and surf the internet. And we've all seen the, the benefits of remote working over the last few months, so it makes a real difference to the welfare of the staff. What are going to be the main operational challenges, do you think? Well, the marine environment is definitely a, a challenging environment. Um, it's a bit different on this project. We have to build everything in our Reading office in the UK, make sure that everything's uh, fully built and robust and ready to go before it's delivered out to sea. And you want to make sure it's really strong, that it doesn't have to be serviced, because it can take a long time to get out and get back if something goes wrong. Absolutely. I mean, uh, telecoms engineers, are they prone to seasickness? <laughs> I hope not. Um, I mean, we do all the normal safety training. Um, and we've done a few jobs at sea before. And you will get the odd person that's, that gets a bit seasick, but our guys love working with the latest technology. They love the benefits that 4G and 5G bring to their customers. So they're, they're up for it and they're really excited about the project. And um, Patrick, is it a specific skill set for a project like this, for an engineer who's got to be out at sea for long periods of time? I mean, is, is it the sort of thing that someone who's worked on the oil rigs might be uh, well suited to? Yeah, we draw, we draw um, um, en engineers and uh, technicians from many different in industries, including oil and gas. Um, I, you know, we run a cycle of two weeks on, two weeks off, very similar to other industries. And, and while the people are out there in the field, you know, the, the telecoms network is so important to make sure that they can work effectively together and efficiently and that, uh, and that they, they, they have the balance with their private lives. You know, the world's connected nowadays. Uh, the wind farm's so far offshore that it's over the curvature of the earth. So we have to create our own network out there and, uh, and we have to make sure that people can be productive and be, stay in contact with their families. Now, Patrick, you warned late last year that offshore wind farms are going to generate less electricity than expected because of uh, the way turbines operate. Just for the uninitiated, can you explain that, please? Yes, of course. Um, so our, our wind farms are designed um, in order to be as efficient as possible and to capture the maximum amount of wind across the area. And as we, as we develop the technology, we learn. And there's just a small small reduction compared to what we modelled previously and what we've experienced previously that we made an adjustment for. But they are still an incredibly great way of creating green, clean green energy. And like I said, uh, th there's, this is going to create enough energy for a, a city like the size of Manchester. And it's incredibly, incredibly great technology. Is there any way that you can change the turbine designs to compensate for this? Uh, there are tweaks across the system that we look at continuously. We're always looking at ways in which we can improve the wind farm, improve our operations, and actually improve the designs and efficiency of new wind farms like Hornsey 2. Uh, we're building them bigger, we're building them with larger turbines, and, and we're capturing more and more of that energy. They're far more efficient and effective than they used to be, yes. And, Sean, while we've got you, what have you made of the whole Huawei debate over here? Are you going to be using Huawei equipment in, uh, in the network? 
not in this particular project. But um, the Huawei one is interesting. Um, we need to be very careful in terms of the supply chain shrinking. I mean, there's a lot fewer telecoms vendors around now than there was a few years ago. So it just needs caution that you don't choke off the supply of equipment when you get rid of a vendor the size of Huawei. All right, Sean Keating and Patrick Harnett, very good to talk to you both. Best of luck with the project. It sounds absolutely fascinating. Might even Thank come you. over if they ever let me out of the studio one of these days. <laughs> Thanks very much. Well, that's it from me. You've been